Tall Tale TV Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron Chapter 8 Harisham Attila stirred, his brain slowly turning back on. Everything hurt. He hadn't opened his eyes yet, but he could feel the warmth of the fire next to him. Oh, is that... Attila mumbled, sniffing the air. Bacon? Brick never spoiled them with bacon. It was just too expensive for them. Attila tried sitting up, but found he couldn't make his body move much past a feeble wiggle, even though there was the temptation of crisp, sizzling pork motivating him. He didn't want to open his eyes just yet. He wanted to hold on to that strange dream he had been having. The memories were starting to fragment, but he could still remember a few things. There was a doctor and a man in a red coat. It was like trying to keep a firm grasp on water as the fragments began to slip away. There was definitely a hamster, that much he was sure about, even if it was wearing a pair of combat boots. Attila groaned, his hangover starting to kick in. His head throbbed and his throat was dry and itchy. He could taste the dust in his mouth and would have to reprimand Brig later for letting him fall asleep on his stomach. Unable to coordinate his motor skills, Attila settled for laying on the cold, hard ground, content with smelling the food. He gave up on trying to hold on to the faded remnants of his dream and opened his eye. The night sky was shrouded and dotted with stars. Attila could see a tinge of green invading his peripheral. Daybreak was on its way. Suddenly, a familiar flooding of blinding light seared through his good eye and directly into the back of his skull. He let out a scream of pain and recoiled, trying to shield his face with his hand. It's okay. He's alive. Even through a response of groans, Attila recognized that voice. It certainly hadn't been a dream. What happened? Where are we? Attila blurted out as he sat upright to escape the flashlight. Pain erupted through his body as his neurons slowly realized he had changed position. Attila struggled through it to focus on the more important issue. Where's the food? Eric chuckled as he tucked away his penlight. We saved you a plate. Attila snatched the food from Eric's outstretched hands. Food was, perhaps, too generous of a term. He stared at the lump of gray porridge. It looked as if someone had added water to dried out potatoes and then crushed them into the general shape of a lopsided pancake and grilled them. Well, burnt them. Attila made a face and poked at it cautiously with a finger. It jiggled. He raised an eyebrow at Eric. Don't give me that look, Eric started, jabbing a finger over at his brother. He made it. Vel grimaced at being tossed beneath the proverbial bus. Hey, if you want me to build something, I can build it, he said his voice irritable with a tinge of hurt. If you want me to break something, I can do that. If you want me to take you to a monster-infested gate through the underground tunnels, I can do that too. But I can't do all that and cook. So shut up and eat it. Something didn't seem to add up. There was a large gap in Attila's memory. The last thing he could remember was Vel calling them over to look at a rat. But instead, there had been... Something clicked back into place. Attila scowled over at Evan. Not cool, man. Evan smiled, his face full of unashamed laughter. Not my fault you can't take a punch, he taunted, that grin never faltering. Who's cute now, you big baby? Attila made a noise of both surprise and insult. Why, you little? Attila picked up one of the gooey pancakes and made to toss it at Evan. Hey! Vel barked again. You throw that, and I will make you eat it off the ground. Evan was on his feet, pulling out a pair of tiny knives. Bring it on, Poncho boy. Eric stepped in between the three of them, pushing Attila back. He didn't want to have to drag his friend any farther into the caves than they already had. Evan, you said you knew the way out of here. Hopefully you really do, and that isn't some kind of ruse to rob us. Of course I know the way out of here. And if I wanted to rob you, I wanted to wait till we were this far into the caves to do it. I gotta charge you extra for saying that, Evan snapped, brandishing his tiny knives angrily. Eric raised his hands in surrender. Whoa, sorry. Just making light of the situation. So where do we go from here? Evan seemed to relax. 
Well, we're still in the cavern, but we've about reached the ruins of all Underwell. Gotta get to the world pillar, then it's just up and out. Should only take, like, eh, six hours or so. Eric could remember the moment when he first laid eyes upon the original gleaming city of Underwell. With all its bright lights and sparkling gems, he could almost remember how it glowed with a warmth that filled him with a happiness that, really, had nothing to do with the actual lights. Now, it was less than a shadow of its former glory, a broken pile of rubble and decay. What were once spotless shining surfaces were now dulled with dust and debris. Broken homes, shattered pathways, and sinkholes dotted the landscape. Borer worms. They had suddenly appeared with no warning. No one was sure where they had come from, and while they did not feast on flesh, they had been highly territorial. The beasts fought with one another and the inhabitants of the Underwell. The city fought back, and in the end, eradicated them all. But not before the clash brought down the ceiling, that all-protecting canopy that had kept out the toxic mushroom spores. The inhabitants were forced to flee and recreate their metropolis deeper in the bowels of what was once a great aquifer. What was left was a twisting maze of caves, tunnels, and remnants of an old city. There at the heart of the Underwell, just like in the new one, was a less grand version of the towering spire of ivory stone, but a sinkhole beneath it had caused it to collapse, and the once gleaming beacon was now shattered into pieces, creating a path that disappeared into the thick of the glowing mushroom forest. That's what we gotta use to get out of here. Evan said, pointing to the spire. He used his tiny hand to gesture to the other end of the broken ivory summit. The mushrooms teetered and towered over each other, competing with one another to be the tallest. The largest mushroom loomed above the rest, its cap resting neatly and conveniently against an outcropping that led to a large storm drain. Just make sure you have your breathers ready. My phone has Attila exclaimed over a full mouth. Eric turned to find Attila halfway through eating one of the leftover pancakes. He gave Attila a questioning look. With a bit of effort, Attila managed to pry his jaw open. What? They're not that bad. After you get past the outer crust, they're just a bit hard to chew. He took another bite, chewed it for a few moments, and then swallowed hard before repeating himself. I thought you said they weren't dangerous. Those ones aren't, Eric stated, pointing at the glowing forest. But what's drifting down from the gap in the ceiling there is. We're fine here, though. Just don't get too close before putting on your mask. Content with that answer, Attila took another bite of his pancake and followed behind Evan. The kid was leading the group, and more than once they had lost sight of him behind the bits of rubble that littered the street. They slid down a loose dirt slope and came level with the edge of the ruins. Several tunnels tore up out of the ground, pathways left courtesy of the worms. Eric and Vel, thankfully, had missed out on the upheaval, and as a result had never seen one of the creatures in the flesh, but the size of some of the tunnels indicated that the largest ones had been about ten feet in diameter. Eric shook away that thought and was grateful they had been driven to extinction nearly a century ago. This tunnel leads straight to the mushrooms. We could easily follow this one there and avoid all the unstable terrain, Evan mentioned, stopping at the entrance to a tunnel that towered over them. But I hear running water over that way, so we should resupply before we head topside. Holy cannoli, Attila replied. Was this made by one of those worm things? Vel raised a brow, his face impassive. What else do you think it could be? Attila scratched at his eye patch and shrugged. Okay, but do we really want to stroll right in there like it's a road to a candy kingdom or something? What if one of them attacks us in there? Attila gave an uneasy glance at the tunnel's dark entrance before sidestepping it to follow the group. Don't worry, Eric replied, giving Attila a reassuring pat on the shoulder. Since his hand was still wrapped in cement, it knocked Attila forward a step or two. There aren't any worms in here. They've been dead for decades. Attila smiled, his shoulders relaxing, despite the bruising slap to them. Oh, good. That makes our job easy. Vel stopped walking, turning around to face Attila with a suspicious glare. 
What job? He and Eric asked simultaneously. You know, the job Madam Whisper wanted us to do? Attila looked back and forth between the two blank stairs facing him. To kill the borer worms? Vel's eyebrows shot up. What? Eric grabbed Attila by the poncho and hauled him closer. The borer worms are back? And you didn't tell us? Attila pulled a face. Usually, Vel was the one to lose his temper, and Eric kept his cool. Confused at the sudden reversal of roles, Attila opened his mouth to respond. Vel pushed Eric out of the way and grabbed Attila by the poncho, lifting him off his feet. And you promised to kill them? He jerked Attila closer until their faces were almost touching. With just the three of us? There's that temper, Attila thought, wincing at being yelled at. But surely he had told them. But then again, they had been pretty busy. Maybe I did forget, but why did you think she let us leave with duffel bags full of gear? Eric pointed an accusing finger at him. We thought it was because you did the horizontal rattle. <laughs> Even I'm not that good, Attila scoffed. Vel was tightening his grip on the poncho with his mechanical hand, pulling the fabric tighter and tighter around Attila's neck. You son of a... Hey! Evan jumped on a toppled statue of an animal-bound general, some thirty feet away. If you three jerks are done arguing about who's the prettiest, sounds like we're getting close to the water. I just need one of you to spot it. My line of sight is... limited. Vel dropped Attila, whose face had started to drain of color, and cocked an ear, trying to locate the source of the gurgling stream. It was echoing off the cavern's tall ceiling, bouncing around until it was almost impossible to tell where it was coming from. It almost sounded like the scuttling of feet. Thousands of scurrying feet. I don't... Vel paused, straining to find the direction of the sound. I don't think that's water. The sound of skittering grew suddenly louder, until it was almost deafening. A wall some thirty feet away crumbled to dust as a long, serpentine body smashed through it. What Madame Whisper had generously called a worm was so far from it that it was almost comical. Uncurling itself to nearly the length of a bus was a long, segmented creature as wide as a man. Its body was encased in thick, dull gray armor. Two sets of legs jutted out at every segment on its body, each one ending in a hard, sharp point. Two giant stingers split from the tip of its tail end and its face was a rounded bony mass of recessed eye sockets surrounding a three-sided jaw. The creature began to rear up at its midway point, making itself taller as it opened its hard-billed mouth and let out a cry that shook the ground. And then it dove, snapping its jaws around Evan and leaving behind only a single tiny combat boot. Ian! Attila cried out his hand outstretched in Evan's direction. Run, Eric choked out, as the creature began scurrying towards them at an alarming pace. It was as if he was telling only himself this, as his voice was barely a whisper. He tried to take his own advice, but found himself unable to move his legs. It was as if he were trapped in quicksand. He watched in horror as the worm reared its body back before snapping forward again, moving with lightning speed straight for him. Its hard-billed mouth split open into three sections, offering him a view of its circular maw filled with thousands of tiny, flat teeth. Vel reached out and slammed his metal fist into the side of the worm's head. The worm spiraled off course and flew past Eric, its feet clacking against his arm as it passed. Vel dived on top of the creature, struggling to reach the neck of the wriggling mass. If you're done just standing there all useless like, you could give me a hand. He cried out, not just to Eric, but Attila as well. At the sound of an order, Attila sprang into action. He reached into one of the duffel bags and hauled out a can of bug repellent. Hold it still! Vel was straddling the creature as it bucked and writhed beneath him, trying to damage it with blows to its bony spine. No, you idiot! We need- The worm slammed itself into a large stalagmite, trying to dislodge its rider. Ow! Vel managed to hang on, but just barely. Eric remained frozen. There were just too many legs. Nobody had ever said they had legs. Who the hell named these things? They were clearly not worms. 
Attila ran into the path of the creature, waving his hands frantically in the air. Yo, look at me, you oversized roly-poly! The worm swung around, opening its jaws wide, and Attila tossed the canister into the worm's open maw. He let out a loud whoop of laughter as it crunched down. A small pop sounded as the canister exploded. The worm spit out the broken pieces and began charging Attila, who turned tail and ran. What was that about? Vel cried out. He reached down, grabbing on the beast's legs, near what would be the knee joint, and yanked back hard. The appendage was never designed to move past a certain range, and it snapped clean off. The worm lurched to a stop, letting out a shrill shriek in agony. I thought it would explode its head or something, Attila complained. Guaranteed to work on all insects, my ass. The worm tried its best to wriggle itself around and bite Vel, its jaws snapping and gnashing angrily but its armor plating, again, restricted its range. Vel gave a small snort of laughter as he reached down and removed another leg. Attila decided to take a page out of Vel's book and rushed in, grabbing one of the appendages. This is for Alvin! He wrenched up on the leg, but lacked the upper body strength that Vel had. The worm flexed the leg Attila was attempting to remove, and it sent him sprawling into one of the large tunnels that peppered the landscape. Wah! Eric shook his head, trying to snap out of his paralysis. Just pretend it's a snake, he told himself. Snakes don't have legs. He looked over at his brother, who was prying off another leg, aiding in Eric's self-delusion. It wasn't a bad strategy, hobbling the creature, but it wasn't a solution. Even if they had removed all of its front legs, it would still be able to move, and if they went for the back legs, they would be in range of its mouth. The answer to their problem was elementary. They were screwed. Oh, crap. Vel let go of the leg he was trying to pry from the beast and watched as the creature reared up higher into the air. It reached the pinnacle of its arc and began to topple backwards. The worm was going to crush him by falling on him. Vel threw himself to the side as the beast crashed into the ground, but now he was extracted, and the worm was out for revenge. Eric watched in horror as the worm stumbled after Vel, its limping gait causing it to fall every few strides. Skitter, skitter, crash! Skitter, skitter, crash! Get the fifty cal! Vel yelled. Eric blinked. The what? Vel dived out of the way as the worm gave a lopsided lunge. He was backed into a small alcove in the cavern wall. The big-ass gun! Oh! Eric ran over to the duffel bag and pulled out a ridiculously powerful-looking rifle. Uh, now what? Now what? Vel repeated angrily, a touch of sarcasm on his words, his hands shooting up to push against the worm's head, trying to keep the beast from crushing him. Now shoot it! Eric hoisted the gun into the crook of his shoulder. No need to get snippy, he mumbled as he lined up the shot. He reached for the trigger, but his cement cast clanked against the side of the trigger guard. He tried several more times from various angles. What the hell? Vel was pushed hard against the wall of the alcove as the creature maneuvered its giant head to fit into the tiny space. It's taking so long! I'm trying! Eric tried reversing hands, but without the ability to grip the barrel, the gun just kept slipping out of his hands. I think we need a plan B. Vel let loose a string of expletives that seemed to offend even the worm. Fine, but don't blame me if I shoot you by mistake. He lined up the rifle with his good hand, using his cement fist for support, and pulled the trigger. Bam! Eric felt his shoulder dislocate from the kickback and his wrist hyperextended as the gun checked itself out of his grip. He sucked air through his grit teeth and opened his eyes. The bullet seemed to have connected with the worm, right near its face, but ricocheted off its armor and buried itself into a stalactite somewhere above it. Vel watched in horror as the worm freed itself and tore off straight for Eric. He had no way to intercept as the worm was now between the two of them. Eric, run! Eric froze again, the mass of legs and exoskeleton bearing down on him. The jaws split apart, and it lunged. His primal instincts took over, and he swatted at it. The concrete cast around his hand shattered, 
and the worm slumped to its side, dazed. Did you just bitch slap it? Vel asked, having extricated himself from the alcove to move next to his brother. He spotted Eric's left arm hanging limp at his side. Are you okay? Eric winced and nodded. I'm fine. It just needs to... The monster's tail end thrashed angrily against the cavern floor, trying to line up its stingers. The resulting rumble shook the entire cave and rattled the stalagmites. Another angry thrash and a slew of sharp, jagged rocks began dropping from the ceiling. Eric and Vel narrowly avoided two large stalactites as a third slammed into the worm. Blood, the color of sapphires, began to ooze from the creature's wound as its front end flailed and screeched in pain. Suddenly, a dagger burst out of one of its eye sockets, and the worm gave a final spasm. The dagger retracted, only to exit from another eye socket. The worm toppled over, finally dead, and Evan climbed out from between its slack jaws. He was covered head to toe in slime, blue blood, and digestive juices. He pointed his little knife at Vel. I'm charging extra for this. Vel couldn't help the smile that crept up on his face. Tenacious little squirt, aren't you? Um, Vel, uh, about my shoulder, Eric whimpered. Oh, right. Vel reached over and jerked up on Eric's arm, forcing the joint roughly back into its socket. His brother let out his own string of expletives, and Vel laughed. Oh, don't be such a baby. Look at Evan. He got eaten alive, he said, gesturing to the kid, who was using a severed worm leg to scrape goop off himself. You don't see him complaining. Eric gave his brother a dirty look. Speaking of complainers, he paused, looking around. Where's Attila? Attila heaved on the leg, his mighty muscles bulging with the effort. The creature's leg did not break off as it had for Vel. There must be some sort of trick. But no worries. There wasn't an insect alive that could stand up to the great slayer of the forty. Suddenly, Attila was flying through the air. He didn't recall initiating a tactical retreat, but what other explanation could there be? After all, he was the great... Wah! All the air left Attila's lungs as he landed hard and slid across the ground. His momentum carried him over the lip of a steep vertical shaft. As the battle slipped away from view... He let loose a heroic battle cry to inspire his comrades. <coughs> the shaft dropped a good fifty feet before it began to gently level out. Attila slid down the tunnel ramp before coming face first to a halt. He pushed himself up, spitting out a mouthful of dirt and gravel. The soft glow of small cave mushrooms lit the way, illuminating the single shaft. He couldn't return. The climb back up would be impossible to scale. Onward then, into the unknown. After half an hour of searching, the group decided Attila was either lost, dead, or had run away. In any event, they reasoned that he knew their target was the storm drain above the collapsed tower, and a vote two to one decreed to stop looking and let him find his own way up. They would head for the summit and wait for him there. The encounter with the worm left them a little more than reluctant to travel the tunnels, so they opted for the slow trek through the ruins of Old Underwell. The ascent up to the storm drain was possibly more terrifying than the giant worm. The tower was a smooth round ramp laying on a steep angle, coated with a luminous mucus. It was slick and slippery. Eric nearly slid off the edge twice only to be saved by quickly grabbing a hold of his brother's red duster. Sorry, he called out each time. After cresting the uppermost part of the tower, they were forced to climb their way up through the mushroom forest. At this point, Eric pulled out a breather for himself and modified a spare to fit over Evan's entire head. Vel simply pressed a small button on his coat collar and a sinister metal mask slid into place over his features. Safe from the snowfall of spores, they began leaping from crown to crown, or, in Evan's case, being tossed from crown to crown. Vel and Eric made a bit of a game out of seeing who could toss him further. Evan was less than amused. Attila plucked another glowing mushroom as he walked through the tunnel, tucking it into his hatband next to twenty-some-odd others. After walking into several walls in especially dark portions of the cave, he decided he needed a light source. 
His solution was to strap glowing mushrooms to every available surface of his body. On the plus side, he was now putting off more light than an industrial flood lamp, but he also looked like a shaved glowing yeti with a bad case of the boils. He was very proud of his bright idea. Attila approached another fork in the tunnel, the eighth so far. He shined himself down both pathways before choosing the one that sloped upwards the most, going on the assumption that eventually it would lead him topside. He'd had to retrace his steps more than once when a path had suddenly curved too sharp for him to advance. But all in all, it wasn't a bad way to travel. And then he saw it. Daylight. Yes! And then he realized daylight meant he had left the cave altogether, and his friends. No! He slumped a little and turned around, pouting. He snatched another mushroom off the wall and jammed it into his belt with a huff. Eric looked out at the city expanse below them. There was still no sign of Attila. You guys think he's okay? Who cares? Grunted Vel as he made a face and chucked their bag of gear to the next mushroom. He doesn't show, it just means we can go home. Eric was carefully wrapping his hand with a length of fabric ripped from his coat. It would have to do until they got to the surface and he could safely raid the contents of their duffel bag. Yeah, but I still feel kind of bad. He cinched the fabric tight and flexed his fingers gingerly. It wasn't as good as an actual cast. But at least this one didn't weigh ten pounds. Evan laid a tiny hand on Eric's shin reassuringly. Look at it this way. You only dragged him down here, so it's not your fault he's most likely dead or dying of dehydration. It could happen to anybody. Eric picked up the pint-sized teen by his jacket and flung him like a shot put. Nice distance, Val grunted. The mushroom they were standing on gave an ominous rumble. Dirt fell from the ceiling, coating them in a fine layer of dust. What the hell was that? Vel asked in a growl, his metal shifting and bristling as if he were readying himself for another fight. We killed the worm, right? So perhaps it's just the cavern... settling? Eric offered. They were still several jumps away from the storm drain. Uh, guys, you might want to hurry it up. There's something down there. Evan was peering over the edge of the mushroom cap, pointing at something in the dark below. Eric and Vel leaned over the edge, and in unison, they both sighed. Damn, Damn it. it. The mushroom began to shake violently as a massive worm began skittering its way up the stalk, and it began to lean under the creature's immense weight. Vel grabbed Eric by his coat and hauled him up, shoving him towards the next mushroom. Go! Eric and Vel left the rapidly growing divide rolling as they landed. The mushroom they had just vacated began to topple as a worm the size of legend clambered atop its crown. It was wider than both of them were tall, a true behemoth of the arthropod world. Eric grabbed the bag of gear and moved to throw it to the next landing. Leave it, Val barked. I'll grab short stuff here and let's go. Hey, Evan protested as Vel unceremoniously picked him up by the arm like a rag doll. The worm tried to propel itself at them from the toppling stalk, but fell short and latched onto the trunk of their mushroom nearly halfway down. The crown beneath them began to shake and buck as the creature started charging its way up towards them. One more leap, and they were close enough to scale the stone wall to the storm drain. The drain itself was massive. A tank could drive through this tunnel with ease, or, as luck would have it, a giant killer worm. Evan. How far to the exit? Vel called back as they pelted down the tunnel. Evan was clinging to Vel's back with his little arms wrapped around his neck. Not too far. Just go left, right, two lefts, and another right. Two rights and a left? No! Left, right, two lefts! Just tell us when we get there! Snapped Eric from behind them. The tunnel was starting to shake, stones falling from the ceiling as the worm hurled itself down the corridor. They reached the first fork. Left! Cried Evan, tugging on Vel's collar as if he was steering. They rounded the bend and cried out in pain, throwing up their arms to shield their eyes. Through the fabric of his coat, Eric could just make out something moving around, glowing like a Roman candle. What the hell is that? Hey, I found you guys! 
Attila said, literally beaming with joy. What are you? How? What? Who cares? Vel shouted, pushing past the human glow stick. We need to move. Dust and rock erupted behind them as the worm continued to plow through the tunnel. It skittered to a sharp halt, its lengthy, segmented body piling up behind it like a traffic jam. Its dozen or so eyes blinked furiously as it tried to assess the situation. Attila assumed a wide stance, his hands poised by his sides, fingers twitching like a gunfighter, waiting for high noon. You guys go! I got this! When no one replied, Attila looked over his shoulder to see they had already abandoned him. Oh, come on! That was such a great line, too! He refocused his attention on the worm. This was it. The last one had escaped his wrath, but this one would face the full might of the Great Slayer. The worm chittered, clacking its jaws uncertainly. This glowing creature wasn't running, and it smelled like rotten mushrooms. The worm wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Was it food? Was it challenging him? Yeah! Yelled the little mushroom beast, and it began throwing little chunks of itself in the worm's direction. That meant, what, a challenge? Right, go right, you are the right. Evan shouted in Vel's ear. The exit is right up there. Guys, Eric panted. Where's Attila? Vel looked over his shoulder and swore. Not again. He pulled Evan off his back and handed him to Eric. You guys go. I'll head back and save the idiot. Vel sprinted back the way they had come. Friggin' moron and his friggin' quest. If they friggin' survived this, he'd friggin' kill him. How hard was it to keep up? He hit the next fork in the tunnel. Was it left or right? Damn it! Attila! Vel called down the tunnels. No answer. Great. So now he was going to get himself hopelessly lost in a tunnel with a giant centipede worm thing just trying to find the guy he couldn't stand. Why the hell had he gone after him? A sound echoed down the corridor to his right. Vel cocked his ear as the sound began to get louder. Ah! Attila screeched as he pelted down the path towards Vel, lobbing grenades over his shoulder. Run, you idiot! A series of deafening explosions rattled the tunnel, causing huge chunks of ceiling to fall around them. The screams of the worm echoed behind them, fury tinging the shrill sound wave. Vel scrambled, wide-eyed, behind Attila. Two more grenades flew over Vel's head. Are you insane? He roared, but the explosions and the sound of the collapsing tunnel drowned him out. Vel could see the exit but he could also see the ceiling above them starting to buckle. He grabbed Attila by the mushroom and dove, the ground swallowing the cave mere inches behind their feet. The dirt settled around them, shafts of sun breaking through the clouds of dust and debris. The cries of the worm had ceased, and the ground was no longer shaking. Attila pushed himself to his feet, and the sun lit him from behind, much like a hero from a storybook. Yeah! This was part 8 of an epic ongoing series by Leslie Heron. Of Monsters and Mushrooms is a crossover fanfiction mixing her own characters and settings with a few of those created by author J.D. Wiley. What started as a four-chapter short story has now evolved into a full-length novel with over 20 chapters planned out already. When Leslie isn't torturing poor Attila or subjecting Vel to mental anguish, she loves to draw, craft, and binge-watch Netflix. Oh, that was fun. <laughs>